going on people welcome back to blues fan tv welcome back to another video for you guys and chelsea are in the fa cup final yeah i figured you lot wouldn't have given a shit either i'm not surprised but we have to talk about the reasons why i will say big up to chelsea big up to the team and the players for putting us in the fa cup final for the fourth time in five seasons because that does leave us in a very strong bit of confidence for the rest of the season but I think from a fan's perspective, I don't even know if the rest of the season matters anymore. And we all know the reasons why we're here to discuss it as well. Before we start the video, as always, if you guys haven't done so, smash the like and subscribe button to Blues Fans TV. But let's talk about the European Super League. Unless you guys have been living under a rock for the last 24 hours, you guys would have heard the news that 12 of Europe's top clubs have signed a statement of intent to break away from the European Super League. I think this has something to do with the Champions League and UEFA's wishes to change the format of it to a Swiss format where there would be 36 teams playing in an open league. But we're going to delve into that later on in the video as well because this did seem like a last resort but it now seems a lot more serious. And UEFA have already responded. I think the president of UEFA has only just said a few minutes ago that all players who are involved in the European Super League or are part of clubs that are involved in the Super League will not be allowed into any UEFA competitions or FIFA competitions, which includes the Euros and includes the World Cup as well. And with Kwaku, and at the very least, we'll get your opening thoughts on it because there is a lot to delve into it. What's your thoughts, bro? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack, obviously. Um, the news coming through last night, come like club statements left right and centre it's crazy because obviously on the pitch you feel like these teams are rivals they fight against each other but off the pitch they've been having secret zoom meetings been doing this been chatting and it can't, I don't know it feels like a bit of a betrayal at the moment but obviously there's a lot, to, a lot more to unpack about this yeah, like the first thing you get off is the 12 clubs in itself. AC Milan, Arsenal, Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Barcelona, Inter Milan, Juventus, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Real Madrid and Tottenham have all joined. And this is meant to start from August. Now, I can understand from a financial perspective how this could benefit the 12 clubs. And I will say from a footballing perspective, it absolutely kills the sport dead, which is exactly what the problem is. But this has mainly been based off greed. And I think it's greed based off both sides as well, because I've taken a look at the UEFA model. I don't really agree with the UEFA model either. And that's also stifled by greed too. So the way this looks obviously, and I feel like it's a Michael Owen comment saying it, it's just billionaires arguing with billionaires. And it's just all centered around money. And the only people who stand to lose anything is the people that always stand out to lose anything. And it's the football fans. Yeah, of course. And I don't know why people are surprised. People are like, how could they do it in the midst of a pandemic? The reason why they're doing it right now is because there's no fans in the stadium to, to really voice their displeasure what's going on. And it's just, like you say, it's disgusting, it's greedy. And there's so many adjectives that you can use to describe what's going on right now. But people should not be surprised. Like when the Premier, the Premier League also culpable as well. Premier League, Sky Sports as well as Gary Neville, Roy Keane and Michael Richards spoke, they're also, Sky Sports as a company are culpable for this. When the Premier League allowed billionaire owners like our owner, who's done amazing things for our club, Shape Mansour allows all these owners to come into his club and consolidate that power and re reinforce that power and run these clubs like businesses, why are they then surprised that when it rolls around like in five, five years time, these clubs then want to make money elsewhere, that they want to take their, their talents elsewhere. They don't, want to, they don't want to be part of the Premier League anymore. So the fact that people are surprised is what's most shocking to me because this was always coming. Football is a capitalist sport and we're seeing the fruition of it right now. I think what it is, is you said it perfectly where you said, I'm surprised people didn't see this coming. But I think that's been the biggest part of it all in terms of the response. It's been that nobody saw this coming. We weren't even talking about this two days ago. Yeah. And then yesterday, not even yesterday in the day, it was yesterday by evening that there was like strong rumors coming out that there was going to be an announcement around 9.30. The fact that it was done at 11.30 p.m. kind of shows exactly who was addressed that because that's 6.30 p.m. for everybody in the U.S. And this is beneficial towards those in the U.S. and those who aren't match-going fans, which is why I'm seeing two different gauge reactions to it. Match-going fans are fuming, and rightfully so, so as well, because this is a worldwide club, but it's also an English club too. Yeah. But I can also see from the other perspective why you've got American fans who are seeing this and thinking, yes, I might get to watch Chelsea versus Tottenham in, in uh, I'm not sure, Florida or something like that. Yeah, well, 100%. And the thing... 
the thing that affects us most is that football's always been a meritocracy. So you earn what, you, what, you, what you're given. You're not just given things outright. You have to earn the right to be a top team. And the problem with this whole format is, what, there's going to be 15 teams that are there outright, always going to be there, can't ever get relegated or removed from the system. There's going to be five teams that are revolving in and out. What does that, what does that say about the competition? The reason I love football is because it's almost like theatre, but it's unscripted. You go out there and you earn what you get, you get given. It's not, it's not a case of you have a divine right to be a top team. You have to go and earn being a top team. And right now, with all this kind of unfolding in the midst of a pandemic when fans can't come and voice their pleasure, it just doesn't sit right with me or any other football fan. I haven't come across one person who thinks this is a good idea. And it's not a good idea. And as, as great as Gary Neville spoke, like I said again, we are all culpable. We buy into this fallacy of the big six. What the hell is the big six? The big six is a thing created by the media. It's a media monster to make us interested in certain games, to make us pay Sky subscriptions, to make us renew our season tickets. The big six is a fallacy, man. The big six right now is different to the big six 20 years ago different to the big six 40 years ago like you earn what you are given in football and the fact that Sky have been pushing this agenda of the big six these teams are the ones you want to watch these are the teams that you have to watch these are the teams that you're bought into and the clubs have then benefited in terms of financial gain off of the back of that and now you see these big clubs who are wealthy being like we want to earn our money elsewhere why are you surprised that this is the case why but do you think and I feel like the difference between this top six and the ones 20 years ago and 40 years ago is simply put the money in the sport. Yeah. And, and that's what the biggest problem is. And I'm not here to say that I agree with the European Super League. For the fact is, I don't agree with it. And my main problem with this is that it kills, the comp it kills all the other competitions underneath it. Like, I'll give an example. Like, let's say Tottenham. Because this isn't a, this isn't a league that's going to go throughout the season with all the teams in it. You're going to see eliminations in this league. And it's going to get whittled down to one winning team. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, let's say Tottenham, for example, they drop out at the first round. Mm -hmm. Now all they have is Premier League football. Yeah. But Premier League football doesn't mean shit to them mm -hmm. because they're not competing for top four. They don't need top four and they're not going to be in the Champions League because they're in the Super League. They don't need to go for the title because at that point, probably the title is going to be gone for them anyway. Yeah. So you've got six teams that are in the Premier League who aren't competing for anything. And realistically, the most competitive part of the Premier League season isn't even really the title race anymore. It's the top four race. Mm -hmm. And the top four race just gets killed in the water. Yeah. Mate, let's not mince our words. This is an absolute coup. This is a money grab. This is not a case of they're saying the Super League is going to run alongside the Premier League. Like, in what world is that going to work? Where these uh, these six clubs can go elsewhere, play midweek football, earn billions of pounds or dollars or whatever the hell JP Morgan are paying them in, and then what, come back to the Premier League on the Saturday and slap up the lights of Burnley on a weekly basis because they've got so much more money than them and got all the best players. This thing can't run alongside the Premier League because it's just going to, the disparity between the top six and the rest of the league is going to become greater and greater as this thing carries on. So this is a defection from these top clubs. They have no intention of carrying on being Premier League clubs. Within three or four years' time, if this thing goes ahead, we're going to see the Super League be a completely different thing to the Premier League. Here's the thing. I think that in a long-term sense, but do you, do you actually think that long-term we're going to see us secede from the Premier League? Because for me, I've seen a lot of threats from both the Premier League, the FA from UEFA as well, that they're going to kick them out of all of their respective competitions. Yeah. I don't really think that they're going to follow through with that because I think, as always, there is too much money in this sport. I think for the Premier League, it will be suicidal for them to get rid of the top six because as much as we want to say it is about the 20 clubs in the league, from a revenue perspective, a lot of that is made based off the top six. And I think also from an international perspective, how do you expect to have the World Cup without your best players in the World Cup competing in that? I think with FIFA and UEFA, they want to feel like they still have the power in their hands. But this entire switch up has put the, ha the power in the hands of these 12 clubs. And they're the ones in control, which is why I think, Loki, they're probably going to get what they want. Yeah, for sure. I do understand that. And that's why I have very little sympathy for the Premier League because they're crying wolf right now. They're the ones who, when they're distributing the payments to these teams, it's not distributed fairly. The top teams get more money because they're on TV more time. And that's what, that's what's created this, this division already. But I cannot see a world... Why are they on TV more, most of the time? Because apparently we're supposed to care about them more. Because no, we're, but they have more fans. For, 
I, I hate, I'm playing devil's advocate here, you get me. For sure, for sure they have, they have more fans, but they have more fans because they've been allowed to spend how they like. FFP is a fallacy as well. FFP is not a real thing. When we get told that teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid, every single week I hear they're going bust, but then they're linked with Haaland, then they're linked with Mbappe, they're linked with the best players in the world. Football finance is an absolute myth. And these top clubs have been able to be run like a cartel, like be able to do whatever the hell they want to do. And now you're seeing the fruitions of it. So when the Premier League are crying about it being a problem, they should have seen this coming. They shouldn't have given all that power to these top six clubs. In terms of like how they distribute the wealth, if, the, if they really want the Premier League to be fair, they should have given the same amount of money to, to every club. They should have given, this, like the money should be distributed absolutely fairly. And as a result of that not being the case, you're seeing what's happening now. And I can't see a world where these two, these two parties are going to coexist. Uh, this is exactly where my problem is. And yeah. this is why there's no good guys in this situation. Yeah, yeah, the Premier League are just as money hungry. UEFA are just as money hungry. And the Super League are just as money hungry. We are looking at billionaires just arguing with billionaires over the sake of football. And we could have stopped this years ago, but we kept going for money. And this has been the case for the last 15, 20 years. You've seen it in small aspects like suddenly kits are being sold every season instead of every other season. Now you're seeing um, ticket prices going up and up every season. Sponsors on your arms. Sponsors on your arms. Sponsors everywhere. Literally everywhere, but God forbid a player is a sponsor and he, and he shows it during a celebration. Yeah. He'd get a bigger fine than you would for a racist act. And, and this is the problem. It is all yeah. money centered, which is why the entire system is fucked from the top yeah. to the bottom. Yeah. And we were going to be in this situation in a few years. I know people are going to say, oh, so why don't we stop it now? Instead of just saying, OK, we we're going to be in this situation. Let's accelerate it. But we could have stopped it earlier. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's a perfect storm for these greedy clubs. And I'm saying greedy club, I'm a Chelsea fan. The reason I support Chelsea is for my own intrinsic reasons. And I feel like we're blessed because when I started supporting Chelsea, we we're on the same level as Villa and them, man. Do you know what I mean? Like we, like we were blessed that our owner came in and we felt like it was a blessing. But seeing how this has played out, it's almost making me feel a bit dirty. Do you know what I mean? I feel a bit dirty. It, it is, but I feel for Chelsea because we weren't one of the first English teams to jump into it. Yeah. Us and Manchester City, we felt like we had to because we saw the writing on the wall. We saw that this was serious and this was happening. And you have, one ch you have two choices. You either join and you become more financially stable. You become more attractive. You become more of an asset to the best players. Yeah. Or you stay in the Premier League and you j just get left behind. So this is one thing I also do want to say in terms of like the time and all, on all of this as well, is that people are questioning why is it happening now? It's happening now because we've been in the pandemic for the last year and everyone thought the football was going to collapse. These teams have now realised that, yo, we're still operating with no fans coming in, with no match day revenue, we're still operating profitably. And so with no fans, that they can almost envisage a world where there's not going to be fans in football. I'm not saying that when the Super League comes about, there's not going to be fans going to the games, but they've understood that fans aren't the be all and end all. And people want to slag off fan cams. People want to say that like, like fan channels are, are the death of football. But I remember listening to Ty off AFTV talking about how can they, how can they even conceive going ahead with football without fans? This is going to set, set a de like a dangerous, dangerous precedent. And it's played to fruition. If those fans are staying right now, I'm telling you for, for, for a fact, this ain't running. This ain't running. And Every done. fan base is going to be speaking up about this if this was fa if there was fans. And you are really correct. And that's a completely new point that the fact that there isn't fans here has kind of allowed everyone to get a bit too brave about it. But I still don't think fans are going to allow it to go down quietly. Like there's been rumours of protests in every single Premier League ground in England so far. I've seen stuff already happening in Liverpool. I probably expect to see something at Chelsea as well. The question is like. Do you actually see it stopping anything? Because the only thing I see that could potentially stop the Super League from happening is if UEFA go back on their aims to change the model of it for 2024. Because I feel like that's been what's triggered this in general. Nah, that this is going ahead. These clubs are not going to renege. People have Agnelli, who's um, on the board at Juve, who runs Juve, has resigned from his position at the ECA. People have left jobs to join this thing. They've got a Twitter handle, they've got a website, they've got proposals. They've got JP Morgan who are pledging to back it by five, $5 billion. This thing is going ahead. And the only thing that could possibly stop it is a lack of footfall. But right now there's no fans in the stadium to protest. If it was a case of there was fans, there was, the Stamford Bridge was full to capacity and fans all came together and decided not to fill the stadium, then they'd feel it because it hit their pockets. But right now these clubs are operating without fans anyway. So I can't really see what legislation or what can come into place to stop this happening. It's happening and it's fucking killing me man yep literally i i don't feel like there's anything more we should add to this but guys let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below 
European Super League and either this or just UEFA's model, which just looks like a money grab in itself. Everything around football is surrounded by money and it has been surrounded by money for the last 15 years. And I feel like we finally got to the point where everyone's saying the bubble's gonna burst sooner or later. We might be seeing the bubble bursting right before our eyes, but let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV if you guys haven't checked out already. Check out the We Talk Football podcast. Yeah, Did yeah, I get that yeah, correct? Yeah. Yes, check out Carefree Lewis G as well. Smash the like and subscribe button and we'll be back tomorrow for Brighton versus Chelsea. I hope you guys are excited as we are for it.